And then the seed says, okay, that's my bit. And the seed, that is what was in the seed, that which the seed produced, is now going to continue the growth process. Hey, are you hearing this? Because this is how it works. And we're talking about you. Because God has put the seed in every one of you. And that seed is Christ. Which means that when that seed drops down into the earth of your humanity, in other words, into this outer man, this body of dust, when that seed touches that dust and is energized and released, it will produce something. If I plant an orange seed, I'll get an orange tree. If I plant a mango seed, I get a mango tree. If Christ is planted as a seed in you, the only thing that will grow out of that seed is Christ. Amen. Nothing else. And the process of growth and development is what came out of the seed, which is Christ. As a seed, he has no real purpose except to give his life to you. Amen. That's the only purpose he has, to give his life to you. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave us Amen. his son. That's how I read it. That's right. See, they keep telling me, oh, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sin. Come on. God so loved the world that he gave us his son who dwells in every man, that is Christ. Amen. Dwells in every man. Why? Because God put his likeness and image into every man. And his likeness and image is in that seed. How are you going to be like Christ? Come on. How are you going to be like Christ? How are you going to become a manifestation of Christ in this world? Why, well, do you think you can do that? I've got news for you. You're wasting your time to even try. But see, I also, for many years, you know, I was always saying, well, God, you know, I believe one day you're going to do something to me and I'm going to become a new creation. God, you know, I believe that one day there's going to be a, a great manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, wonderful. Lord, I can't wait for that day. I want to tell you, there's nothing in the future for you. There's not a thing. All the works of God were finished from the foundation of the world. There's nothing that's waiting for you out there. You've got everything God's ever going to give you. You say, but Lord, I need more love. Yes, it's in the Christ in you. You say, no, but I need, I need more grace. Yes, it's in the Christ in you. Lord, I need peace. Yes, it's in the Christ in you. Oh, Lord, I need more perfection. Yes, it's in the Christ in you. It's all there. There's nothing you can think of that God wants you to have that is not already in you. You've got it all. That which you sow, you don't sow the body, that shall be, but you just plant the grain. That's all you do. You put that in the ground. And then he said, verse 38, but God giveth it a body as it has pleased him. God giveth it a body. What body is that? That's your body. That's your body, sir. That's your body. That's your body. Come on, this is what he's talking about. What did he say? Unto us. Unto us. A child is born. You are the child born. Come on. You are the child born. This is the reality. There has to be a child born. Why? No son of God has ever been born on this earth. 
Who's given birth to the Son of God? Nobody here. Except the seed that God's put in you. And that seed, that is the Son of God. That's a seed. God gives it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. He has given you the body that he designed, that he planned, and that he put together in your mother's womb for himself, not for any other reason. Are you hearing this? You see, Christians have never understood these things. A body? Well, you know, I mean, you know, you may not be going in for a beauty contest. I mean, I've never even entered, you know. I didn't think I'd stand a whole great chance anyway, but it doesn't matter because that wasn't the reason God created me. He said, Des, why do you look okay? It doesn't matter what you look like. It's who dwells in you that really counts. Who dwells in you? It's who's in you that really counts. Praise the Lord. You are the body born. You are the body unto us. A child has been born. But into that body, into that fetus, God put a spirit. And that spirit is Christ. Hallelujah. This is the truth. So he says, God has given it a body, and he said that body is a body that pleases him, so you've got no excuse. Don't tell me you're too short, or you're too tall, or you wish you were blonde, and you're a brunette, or whatever. It doesn't matter, because God has given you the body he wanted you to have because it was for him not for you your body does not belong to you 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 your body was created I'm oh, sorry your body was formed in your mother's womb and it was formed for the seed to dwell in so the seed has been planted in you and the Apostle Paul understood this, that true ministry is the energizing of that seed in a person. Verse 45, 1 Corinthians 15, first, uh, verse 45. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. A living soul cannot know God. It's impossible. Because a living soul has been separated from God in their minds because it is not possible for anybody to be separated from God and be alive on the earth. Why? The only life that you have in your body is the Christ of God. That's all. Your body per se has no life in it at all. But the life that's in you is the Christ of God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the life of the world. There is no other stream of life except that which comes from God that dwells in you. So, that's Adam, the living soul. But the last Adam, and this is Jesus Christ,